Okay, in this video we're going to talk about oscilloscope probes, specifically about uh, the ground connections, the ground leads on those probes, and how those ground leads can affect uh, the quality of the signal that you measure. So, uh, you know, most times you get uh, these oscilloscope probes and they come with uh, ground leads and then a couple of uh, assorted you know, ground connections, but uh, most people don't pay too much attention to them, and I just wanted to show you why you probably should. Uh, even if you're not working with really high frequency signals, sometimes if you're just working with digital signals, the rising and falling edges of those digital signals may be fast enough that they'll be really severely impacted by longer ground lengths. And I'll show you uh, what I mean by that. So um, we'll do two examples. One from a signal generator. I've got a signal being generated from this signal generator back here that's coming up into uh, this uh, BNC connector being terminated with a 50 ohm resistor right here onto this board. And uh, so I'll take this uh, this probe, it's a 300, 300 megahertz probe, and I'll clip that onto ground, okay? And we'll clip that probe onto uh, the resistor here, okay? I've got a one megahertz uh, square wave coming out of the signal generator, but it's got about two nanosecond rising and falling edges. So if we take a look at that over here on the scope, okay? So, uh, and you tell, see there's a fair amount of overshoot uh, and ringing on the rising and falling edges of that. In fact, if we speed the scope up here a little bit, it's pretty easy to see that. Okay, let's turn the intensity up here a little bit. You can see we've got a fair amount of overshoot. In this case, it's lasting you know, one, two, three, almost four divisions before it finally settles out here. And that's at 20 nanoseconds of division, so there's about 80 nanoseconds of ringing and distortion. It's overshooting by about a volt on this 5 volt signal. And that's all due to that ground lead length. And uh, let me show you uh, how we can kind of you know, see that for sure. So let's kind of swing back over here to the probe. Okay. And uh, I'm going to take this probe off of here and take this you know, six inch long ground lead that we have on here and replace it. I'll just yank it out of the back here. Okay. I'm going to replace it with this one here, which is only about four inches long. Okay. So let's uh, kind of stick that back in there. Okay. I'll take this clip and it's convenient to go on the other side of the resistor and I'll probe over here and now let's go take a look at what this looks like okay well now we can see I still have about that same one volt overshoot but it's settling out a whole lot faster within about uh, 0, 02, 0, 03 divisions or so instead of 4 okay well because we still have a fair amount of lead length but we can see how I'm just I'm playing with the probe and the lead length and, and just kind of touching it. And that's another key is if you, if you can touch the probe and move things around like I'm just moving the wire around a little bit okay and uh, I can change the kind of the way that overshoot looks that's kind of telling you that that probe wire, the ground wire is affecting uh, the, the, the measurement and uh, really kind of creating some of those artifacts. So let's look at a couple of other ways that we can do uh, probing on this to minimize that effect. Okay. So many of the, again, these probes will often come with uh, different types of ground attachments and a lot of people don't pay attention to them and you really kind of should. So this particular style of probe uh, has got a couple of other ways that uh, we can attach ground to it. So if we pull the witch's hat off here, okay, just left with the ground tip, that also helps too. That reduces some of the length on the tip and the inductance on the tip. That will help as well. So if uh, you can get away with hand probing and not using the clips, that's always a good idea. But now uh, this ground lead length is still going to create a pretty good size loop, okay? Probably 100 nanohenries or so of inductance, maybe a little more, okay? So what we can do is take advantage of another grounding connection. This particular probe, if I unplug the ground from here, okay, and uh, we can dis disassemble this portion of the probe and reassemble it a different way. If I take this shell off, okay, and I slide off my ground adapter and literally turn it around, Okay, there's our hole. We'll put that back on this way and put my sleeve back on. Okay, now the hole is on this side. And this probe also came with uh, a couple of these types of ground adapters. A little bit of a kind of a semi rigid, a little bit flexible, but kind of a semi rigid, shorter connection. We plug that into the probe here now, like so. Okay, so now we have a nice shorter ground connection and then if we rotate this around it can be you know kind of closer together or further apart okay so what we can do is use this to probe and take a look at this signal over here so let's see if I can do this with one hand and uh, rotate the camera with the other well let me do let me rotate the camera here to the scope here first okay and now I'll get this probe on here okay 
So now you can actually see that uh, that ringing is uh, dramatically improved. Uh, it's still overshooting, uh, well not quite the same amount, it probably is only overshooting about uh, three quarters of a volt now. But you can see it's, it's kind of settled out within one division, or less than 20 nanoseconds. So getting that shorter ground lead length in there certainly helps. Okay. Now of course this ground lead length isn't, isn't quite as short as things could be. Okay. Because uh, there's still you know a good inch, inch and a half, maybe two inches before it gets up to where it actually touches ground. So we have still have a pretty good loop area in there, and that's what determines the inductance. So uh, a couple of other options that we have. Um, let's take a look at the at this probe and a couple of other things we've got there. Let's disassemble this thing here again. And one of the other uh, attachments that comes with this is this type of thing. And this is actually this sub miniature uh, type of uh, probe is a very common. Uh, probe by a lot of manufacturers um, and uh, it's got this the coaxial ground right out to uh, next to the tip here so this gives us the way of if I kind of plug this one on here and this could go on with this ground that ground sleeve in there as well but I'm going I'm to leave it off because we're going to use a couple of other ground clips uh, one option is this option here uh, for this particular probe the probe can plug into here okay and then there's your your uh, regular probe tip and this is a spring-loaded ground pin so that's one way to go do that now a lot, not a lot of manufacturers make this kind of a thing uh, another common thing is to have this type of a ground clip this one basically slips right over this probe tip like so and now the ground lead is really close although that's still a fairly long lead but you can get away with even home making something here's a a little coil of wire Let's see if I can get a good picture of that Okay, just a little coil of wire that uh, that I put together. Okay, that um, just can slip right over the end of this probe like so. Okay, and now I've got a really short connection to ground. Okay, just from this wire and the probe tip right to ground. Okay, and let's go take a look at how good that signal looks with this probe. I'll uh, bring this guy back over to the scope, and let me get this probe positioned here. And now take a look at that signal. Okay, very little overshoot on there. In fact, there's just a little bit of, of ringing underneath. Okay, but uh, really clean. Okay, and a lot better than what we're looking at with that six-inch ground lead. So uh, almost as good as it gets uh, from this standpoint. So uh, now let's look at this from a. Uh, now this is a fairly low-frequency signal. It's coming out of a signal generator, so uh, things are going to look kind of ideal. Uh, let's take a look at you know, more of a real-world signal, okay? And I'll just kind of do the two extremes here, okay? So I'm going to put my uh, my old ground clip back on here, okay? And kind of throw this together here real quick, and we'll take that uh, six-inch ground lead. And what I've got on this board uh, right here is uh, just a little 30 megahertz uh, model or crystal oscillator. It's a little four-pin crystal oscillator running off of five volts, being powered here and the output pin is right here. So if I take my six inch ground lead, okay, and probe, I'll just kind of clip that onto ground here, stick my probe, you know, right here, and uh, let's go take a look at this 30 megahertz signal on the scope. So I'm going to put the probe down here while I rotate the camera around, and there we go. And now if I take and probe that point, there's my 30 megahertz signal. Okay, now because this signal is so much faster, that rising and fall, that overshoot that we're seeing is a much larger proportion of that signal. Okay, so it really kind of makes that signal look pretty nasty. Okay, now I'm going to reassemble my probe here into with that really short ground lead connection that I showed you at the end of this. Okay, kind of bring this up into here. So I'm just bringing this on. So I'm putting this probe configuration on with my little twisted wire. Okay. And let's go probe that same signal now with my custom little short little ground. And there we go. Now this is out, out, of, a, uh, out of a real device. So there's a little bit of overshoot and undershoot in there, but that's not horrible. It certainly looks a whole lot more like a square wave and a whole lot cleaner than uh, that signal with the very long ground lead. So uh, just the whole point of this video is just that you really ought to you know, pay close attention to the different types of ground connections that... Um, your, your probes come with and uh, recognize that uh, they will have a lot of effect on the signal integrity of your signal 
And where it becomes important is, you know, even when you think about when you're building up your circuits, so many of us, uh, like myself included, build up circuits on breadboards like these, and we'll use wires like this to connect up into things. And Now, each of these wires has some inductance that are going to affect things. These breadboards are pretty bad when it comes to being able to filter, you know, and provide uh, decoupling for the power supplies, you know, with a capacitor across the devices. So there's a lot of inductance associated with these. There's some capacitance between the lines. Uh, you don't have a good ground plane, so uh, grounds are always kind of you know, kind of done together with these little jumper wires and stuff. So all of this stuff is going to affect signal integrity. Again, even if your circuits are only working at a couple of megahertz, those edge speeds out of those uh, out of these circuits might be a few nanoseconds, which means that they've got you know frequency components well over a couple of hundred megahertz. Okay, so they're all going to be affected by uh, you know, any stray inductance and things like that, not only in the ground inductance, or, you know, ground lead for the probes, but also in the interconnects. So, um, but uh, so anyway, I hope you learned a little something here about uh, about grounds and uh, and grounds for probes and how uh, a simple little wire, you know, on a like a probe ground, can dramatically affect the quality of the signals that you measure. So uh, anyway, any questions, comments, uh, always are welcome. Thank you.